what happened in multifamily residential real estate in Las Vegas in January of 2024? Well, let's find out. I'm Justin Miller with the Chong Miller Group. At the Chong Miller Group, we help people buy and sell homes, including condos and townhomes. We help people build wealth through real estate. I provide this information to you to make sure that you are better informed so you can make decisions as an informed consumer should you decide you want to or need to buy a property or sell a property. Or just simply consider the idea of investing in properties. Well, what happened is a general statement, prices approximately flat, demand improving, and supply remains problematic. So before we get into the details, smash the like button, hit the notification bell, subscribe if you've not already, and please feel free to share these videos with your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues, your family members, anyone you think might be beneficially improved in their, in their ability to engage in real estate transactions uh, by knowing the information that's actually in these videos. Okay, per tradition, I'm gonna look at condos first, and then I'll look at townhomes. Condos. Median sale price. This is the median at which condos sold during the course of the month of January of 2024. And remember, I'm looking at the January data in this February update. The January data as of reported completely for the month as of February 7th of 2024. Uh, $234,000. That's down. It's down $1,000 from $235 in December 2023. That is down 0.4%. It is up from $215,000 at the end of January 2023. So we're up 8.8% uh, year over year. Kind of by reference, uh, single family year over year up 5.0%. So condos continue to outperform. Uh, we actually saw uh, prices in the um, single family home space, if you've not watched that video, down 0.1% during the course of uh, January. We're down 0.4% here in, uh, in the condo space. Now, I don't think that that's actually particularly interesting information. It's a $1,000 price change. And changes at the margin like that, that are very small, can simply be an issue of the mix of properties that actually closed on a transaction during the course of the month. There may have been a couple that were a little bit lower price as opposed to a couple that were a little bit higher price on another month. So that doesn't really, if, if we're just looking at $1,000 changes, it's not really giving us much valid insight. Um, so prices basically were flat. Okay. What about demand? What about demand for condos? How does that look? Uh, that number is interesting because that's a little bit different than just simply this overall market statistic of price. Uh, 251 condos sold. They closed escrow, they traded hands, they actually sold during the course of January. That number is up, uh, it's up three units from 248 or it's up 1.2% for uh, from December of 2023. So that's good. We would actually expect to see uh, some increasing demand uh, apparent in the market in January, where December tends to be really low. Now, interestingly, closed sales lag uh, contract signings. They, they lag people looking at properties. And so we actually generally see the lowest number of new listings, the lowest inventory, the lowest number of pending contracts taking place in December, we actually tend to see on a normal seasonal basis, lowest sales numbers taking place in January. And so this is actually not the lowest. We bounced slightly three units up from December of 2023. Now we are up 17.8% from the 213 that closed in uh, January of 2023. So that's a healthy increase. But of course, last year, we had very low volume numbers all year long. So what about with pending contracts? Pending contracts are buyer liked a property, wrote an offer, buyer and seller negotiated the offer, seller accepted, escrow was opened, you're in a pending contract status until the escrow closes and it's sold 
or until the escrow falls apart and the property comes into a back on market kind of status. This number is encouraging. 365 contracts were written that have not yet closed, that are pending. 365. That's, uh, that's 114 more than closed in January. So this is actually really encouraging for what might be happening in February. It's also up 54.7% from the 236 pendings that had occurred during December. Again, we expect to see pendings down in December and therefore closed down in January. But this is a, a nice, very healthy bounce, 54.7% higher than the numbers that we saw in December. Um, this is actually up 37.2% from the uh, 266 that we saw go into pending contract uh, in January of 2023. So this suggests that demand in the market is actually improving, it's actually quite healthy, and I will point out, interest rates were actually still going up in the month of January. They had bounced off the lows they'd gotten to in December and had gone back up. I think we're gonna see interest rates uh, a change trend here in February. I think it's a durable change in trend and we're gonna see interest rates continuing down. There may be little bumps along the road, continuing down marginally between now and either April or May. And then we're gonna see some substantial decreases in interest rates from that point forward. And by the way, if you're thinking about holding out to not buy until interest rates have come down, Keep in mind, when interest rates have come down, a lot more buyers will be entering into this market. They're there, they're waiting on the sidelines, as maybe some of you are, hoping that you're gonna get this amazing interest rate deal. There's a lot of people who are thinking that way. You wanna be in front of them. You wanna buy a property now, why? Because when all of those people come in as buyers, prices are gonna be going much higher. You're able to lock in a price now, you're gonna have six or seven months of a higher interest rate before you refinance on your new mortgage. And then you'll have a lower interest rate, just like those people will be getting a lower interest rate if they buy in six or seven months, but they're gonna be buying at a much higher price point. All right, so the demand side is looking actually pretty good in the condo space. What about supply? Supply remains hugely problematic. 803 condos listed for sale, standing inventory, for sale, resale condos at the end of January of 2024. That number is down another 3.4% from the 831 in inventory at the end of December. Normally, December is the weakest inventory, so this is actually counter-cyclical that we're eating through inventories still. Uh, this is very problematic. Now, this is down 20.4% from the inventory that we saw in January of 2023. Very weak inventory numbers. A little bit more encouraging is the new listings. This is newly listed for sale condos, resale condos that have come into the market during the course of January, 488. That is up substantially from the 301 that we saw in um, in December of 2023, that's up 62.1%. That's a big improvement, but we were sitting at historically low levels last year, late last year. So this is not bringing it back to a high level. This is getting us a little bit closer to what we might expect we should be at for new listings. Uh, this is up 29.1% from the 378 new newly listed that we saw in January of 2023. Um, could this actually represent a turn in what we're, we should expect for inventory going forward in uh, the condo space? I think it likely is. Um, I don't think it's gonna be a dramatic turn. We're not gonna see a flood of new inventory into the market because all of those issues that have been holding sellers back continue to exist with regard to interest rates, with regard to fear about the market. But it does look like we're seeing some loosening there and we're gonna see some improvement in the supply side 
going forward. And that'll probably continue through the uh, large selling seasons of, of this year. Um, now, back on market, very problematic statistic. These are pending contracts that did not close, but rather fell out and came back into the market. 129, 33.9% of all of the condo contracts that were written, literally more than a third of every contract written on condos in January of 2024 collapsed. Why are these contracts collapsing and why at such a high rate? This is a problem that really started to manifest itself in late 2020, um, actually mid 2020 with pandemic related issues and then the reopening of the economy and a lot of uncertainty. These back on market numbers are just absolutely atrocious. When you're talking with me or any other real estate agent, you want to find out from them, from me or, or whoever the agents are that you're talking to, what is it that's going on that's driving these horribly bad back on market numbers? Whether you're a buyer or a seller, this is literally deadly to a deal. It's, it's hugely problematic. You want to understand what they think is going on. You want to understand what they do to try to make sure these things, do, these issues do not negatively impact you and the transaction that you get into. We've been dealing with these kinds of issues, uh, the Chong Miller Group, for quite a while. We are very good at protecting our clients from the issues that may arise. We do so prospectively, meaning we, we pre-negotiate how we're going to deal with a lot of these issues should they actually arise. And it's highly protective of our clients. And we're very happy to do the same thing for you. So please find out from other agents you may be talking to what they're doing. Obviously, a lot of agents are completely failing in this regard because more than a third of condo contracts collapse. They fail right? Buyer has to go off, lift their wounds, and maybe go back into the market again. Seller needs to go lift their wounds and maybe put their property back on the market. And by the way, these back on market numbers are actually understating of the problem because some properties just don't come back on the market, right? They may decide to put the property up for rent. Well, that's not a back on market. They may decide to withdraw the property from the market and continue to live there or let their friends stay there or what have you. That's not a back on market. So these back on market numbers are hugely problematic and they actually, at least marginally, understate the, uh, the real level of the problem. So that's condos. That's what's going on in the condo space. Flat pricing, strong indicators of emergent demand, uh, some problems in the inventory space, but maybe improvements showing with regard to new listings. So let's get into townhomes. Before I do, again, I'm Justin Miller with the Chong Miller Group. At the Chong Miller Group, we help people buy and sell homes. We help people buy and sell townhomes and condos as well. We help people build wealth through real estate. Please uh, reach out with questions you have and, uh, and we'd be happy to talk with you and figure out if we can actually help you with your real estate questions and, and interests and transactions. Townhomes. Median sale price on townhome, $315,000. This was up 1.1% from December's $312,000. Uh, this is the only market segment where we actually saw prices increase during the course of January. We saw flat, very minor decreases in condos and in single family homes. So relative strength in townhomes. We're down, however, 0.1% from 318,450 in January of 2024. So this is the only market segment where we actually saw prices go down on an annual basis. We're up 5.0% on single family homes. We're up 8.8% uh, on condos year over year. This is I believe a feature of the way in which prices recovered last year in the townhome market space. We recovered much more quickly, much more completely, and then we saw some drop-offs in the last latter part of 2023. 
And so I think this is just a manifestation of that as opposed to any kind of new trend emerging in the townhome space. And in fact, we are up month over month, up 1.1%. Uh, demand. Demand also quite encouraging in the townhome space, 165 uh, sold. That is up 10, 10.7% from 149 sold in December of 2023. So that's actually really good news. And remember, normal seasonal patterns have January sales as the lowest of the year. So if we'd come down a little on sales, on closed sales, that would not have been surprising at all. Instead, townhomes were up 10.7%. Uh, so that's really good. We're up 16.2% from 142 in January of 2023. Now, what about pending? Pending contracts, uh, townhomes, we are up. We are up from, uh, from 152. Uh, in December, we we're up to 205. This is a very healthy 34.9% increase in the number of pending contracts that exist that are open on townhomes. This number is not only above what we saw for sales in January, suggesting February should be stronger for closed sales, but it is up from the month prior. It is also up 6.2% year over year from the 193 pending contracts that we saw on townhomes in uh, in January of 2023. So encouraging demand numbers here in the townhome space, similarly to the encouraging numbers we saw in the, um, in the condo space. And in fact, uh, similar to the encouraging numbers that we saw in the single family home space as well. Suggesting demand is, uh, is emergent within the entire real estate market right now in the Las Vegas Valley. And so really good news in that regard, especially when you consider that during the course of January, interest rates were actually going up. Uh, okay, what about supplies? Supplies a little more tricky. 389 townhomes in standing inventory for sale at the end of January, 2024. That is down another 12.8% from the 446 townhomes that were in inventory in December of 2023. This is really significant because December is generally the weakest month of the year for inventory. And we've actually come down double digits, 12.8% from the inventory that we had in December. So very low levels of inventory in the townhome space. Uh, this is down 43.3% from the 686 that we saw in standing inventory at the end of uh, January of 2023. Not surprising we've come down from that because we've been, we had had relatively high inventory, uh, basically about normal inventory. Uh, in September of 2022, that number we've been falling from ever since. And so we know that the early last year is going to have higher inventory than what we saw in the latter part of last year. And so that we're high relative to where we were a year ago, or, or rather that the, in, the decrease is large relative to where we were a year ago, not a surprise, but we're down 43.3% still from where we were in January. Now, this is where it becomes um, a little more interesting. Newly listed resale townhomes, uh, 244 uh, in January of 24. This is up 59.4% from 153. So that's really good. We do expect a significant seasonal balance in January for pending, uh, I'm sorry, for newly listed uh, inventory. This is up one townhome, less than 1% from 243 in, that we had seen in uh, January of 2023. So about flat year over year, but we did see a significant increase in newly listed relative to December. That's good. Does that suggest that we're going to start to see inventory go up in February in the townhome space? Yes, I think we'll see some increase. 
Um, this number is actually really good. I will point out that pending townhomes, 205, just barely more than the uh, newly listed inventory during the course of January. So this could be fully depleted. We might see perfectly flat inventory in townhomes. Uh, in February, we might see a slight increase. Not going to be a substantial increase, but we may be now finally getting to bounce along the bottom of inventory, and, and we will start to see inventory builds as we go through this year. The one other statistic, back on market, 73 townhomes came back into the market during the course of January 2024. That is 30.7% of townhomes that were in contract fell out of contract. So a devastatingly high number, right? We're slightly less than on condos where we're just over 33%. We are um, slightly less than we were on single family homes coming back into the market. We're at 32.8%, but this is, this is a devastating number. Every one of the contracts that fails is, is a huge emotional blow and potentially financial blow to a buyer and to a seller. There is no good outcome from a property going back onto the market. This is something that we're very good about helping our clients get through. When we get them into contract, whether they're buyers or sellers, we make sure we're protecting them from the most common issues that are causing contracts to fail from those issues that are extremely elevated. Again, we should be seeing back on market in a normal market, but that is 10 to 12, maybe spiking occasionally to 15%. We're running three times that across the entire market space here for real estate in the Las Vegas Valley. Why is that? Well, we have a lot of insights into why that is. I've talked about why that is in the past. If you're interested, if it's meaningful to you, please reach out. I'd be happy to talk with you about it. Be happy to solve these issues for you. If you want to hire us and work with us, these are really important things. And so make sure if you're talking with some other real estate agent, which is fine, you should uh, talk with a variety of real estate agents, but that you find out from them why they think this is happening and what they're doing about it. Because it is a massively large feature in this market and it's bad for everyone in this market. Okay, so that's it. That is the market update for February 2024, where we look at the January data for condos and townhomes. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and please reach out with any questions you have. Thank you.